You're listening to Girls Get Fundable Podcast. I'm Josette Fleury, and I'll be your host, founder and CEO of Securing My Gems, and my mission is to hashtag start business credit. On this pod, we build a community helping female entrepreneurs start a business, build business credit, and scale to business funding. Whether just getting started or already have an established business, this pod will drop gems, bringing tips and strategies from experts teaching how to start, build, and scale your business, and hashtag Lady J Chats episodes full of my own actionable steps on business credit to help you on your journey. If you're feeling stuck and do not know where to begin and need more personalized guidance, I am here for you. In every episode, you'll find a link to book a free consultation. You can find the link easily in the show notes. This free consultation will help us decide if my VIP day intensive is right for you. If it is, we'll get started. If it isn't, I might suggest one of my immediately available Girl Get Fundable Acceleration course, my business credit trailer board, or my ebook Journey to 850. You can find all the deets on josetteflurry.net. It's so exciting, and I'm so glad you're here. Let's jump right into today's episode. Hello, I am so glad to be here with you all and so excited to talk to you and to share with you that I have a special guest on today with me and I want her to go ahead and introduce herself. I am so happy that you're here. Go ahead. Tell us who you are. Hey, everyone. Hey, Miss Jacette. I'm so excited to be here. So um, my name is Raquel, but I'm known as the Bougie Banker. And yeah, I help women all over the world just have a better relationship with money and really create a lifestyle that works for them within their finances so they can still live bougie and balanced. Yes, that's right. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) It's great to have both. And of course, I am, like I said, I'm going to dive right in, but I'm so happy, so excited. You can hear me smiling. (laughs) Um, So tell us a little bit about you and something that's interesting so that we could know more about the bougie banker. Yes, ma'am. So um, a little bit more about me. Well, I have my undergrad and my master's. My undergrad is in criminal justice and my master's is in business administration. And I have a long history of entrepreneurship bunch of ups and downs. I started out as a correctional officer after I graduated from Savannah State University. And then from there, um, I was put on bed rest due to the pregnancy with my daughter because I broke up a fight between two inmates while at the facility. For some reason, I was thinking safety first and it just totally slipped my mind. I don't even know how to explain it, but I was like, ah, they're fighting. And so I ran over there because I was the only officer in the hall Broke it up. One of the inmates fell on my stomach. And that was the end of my my career as a correctional officer. Then went from having a house to myself, a career, to just being mom and being a stay-at-home mom while I loved being at home with my daughter. And then as well as um, my spouse's daughter, She um, she's 13 now. But when I started raising her, she was three. So everything that I did was surrounded around his schedule and their schedule. And as much as I love being a mom and being a spouse, I just really felt like I was losing identity of self in that picture. So I really just started trying to figure out what I could do. And the best thing for us at the time was for me to work at the daycare where my daughter was going. So there I was with the degree, making $7.25 an hour struggling. It was, it was hard, (laughs) but, um, I started paying attention to what management was doing and what the owners were doing. And I was like, this just can't be that difficult to figure out. So on the weekends, I was taking classes for my CDA certification, which is your child education certification. And I became certified, started using my checks to go to Goodwill and buy items that I thought would be sufficient for an in-home daycare. So I opened my in-home daycare 
and it was successful. Everything was going great. And it eventually led to me opening the first women's only gym with childcare in my city. So all of that was going great. I was certified personal trainer. We had, you know, I had seven, seven employees. It was a 1700 square foot building. Uh, just amazing. And at that point, I just knew that I was set. You know, I grew up as an athlete. I was a college athlete. And I just knew that this is what I was supposed to be doing. But unfortunately, one day I was headed home and a man ran a red light. He's an older gentleman. He T-boned me. I was in a neck brace for six months. I had over 16 spinal injections. I couldn't work. I couldn't work out or do anything like that for a year. So that entire time, my accounts were just bleeding like severely just bleeding. So I was holding on to this thought that I was going to come back and it just wasn't possible. I was still paying my employees. I was still paying my lease. I was still paying utilities. And by the time it was all said and done, I pretty much lost everything. And we were then just struggling. So we went from, you know, a two income earning household to a one income earning household with five people in the house. And I just remember we were just so broke and it was, you try to make the best of your situation, but it just doesn't change the situation. So we needed food stamps, but we didn't, we were like right at that cusp where you should qualify, but you don't qualify. So we had maybe like a hundred, $120 every two weeks to feed the family. And during that time period, I became a great cook. Okay. We ate rice and chicken. Most days, <laughs> the girls ate oatmeal because that was cheap and affordable um, for breakfast. And for dinner, it was mostly chicken and rice and a veggie. But eventually, I was able to start working again. And when I was working, I just remember me working really hard. Like I was working these side jobs, just trying to bring in money. But I was working to maintain a lifestyle. And we were living paycheck to paycheck. And we were struggling still, even though I was working. I was like, I'm working too hard. And it was getting to me. I was having anxiety, sleepless nights, bad weight loss that I didn't know people could notice. And then one day I was like going into Walmart and this guy, he said, man, you sure are pretty, but you will look better with another 30, 40 pounds on you. And, you know, it hurt so bad. And all I could do was smile when he was saying it. But as I walked into Walmart, my eyes just filled up with tears because it's one thing to, to feel the stress and the anxiety, but it's another thing when someone can physically see it on you. And so at that point, I was like, okay, something has to change. So I started doing the workshops, downloading the free templates, watching all the YouTube videos. And it seemed like it would work for a little bit, but once the emotion went away, and once you get settled in your complacency of just this is like you want to do better, but it's what you know in that moment and life continues to happen. And so it was just like, OK, well, if it's working for everyone else and it's not working for me, then the problem has to be me. So eventually I buckled down. I really started to get an understanding from my relationship with money. Um, once I understood that, once I understood how I was really at a fundamental level operating with money, I was able to coach myself through that process and then start working with the numbers. Once I got to the numbers, I did a smooth sale and I started budgeting, saving, eventually investing, paying down debts. And eventually women just started asking me, like my friends, they were like, what are you doing? You what are you doing? Like, you seem like you're getting it together. And I was explaining it to them. And at the time their dad was in Seattle and I was doing better, but the thought of having consistent income from something that I was like, I could have a forever job. It really just was what I was looking for. And so my friends were like, Hey, you should be a banker. You should think about being a banker since you like money so much, go be a banker. And that's exactly what I did. I love my job every day. I went to my job. I was happy to be there. I was just going above and beyond helping the people that would sit at my desk because I knew how it felt not to have. And if I could provide resources that would help them, it was usually like some sort of book they should be reading or some sort of coaching like that I could do with them while they were at my desk. And one day, my boss, we were leaving and she called me. She said, hey, can you come in an hour early? 
I'm like, yeah. I was like, oh, they must be short staff. They need some help. So I go in. I have one of my red shiny antlers because it's around Christmas time. And it was just her and the service manager. And she was like, I need you to come sit at my desk. I'm like, okay, sure. Still, I'm completely oblivious to what's going on. And I sit down and she's like, I don't know how to tell you this, but the company has made some decisions. And so we need to let you go. When I tell you I boo-hoo, sobbed, cried, like I didn't get picked for the team. Like I was just so distraught. And she came over and she hugged me. And I was like, can I please just say goodbye to my friends, please? And she was like, you have to go. (laughs) She was like, you have to go. So um, I cleared out my desk and I went home. And when I called HR, I found out that it wasn't just me. It was thousands, thousands of bankers. um, And it was due to COVID. So due to the pandemic is the reason why I lost my job. And I was like, I don't want to stop helping people with their finances. It just felt too good. It felt too right of the thing to do to stop. So I created a business and you know, started out from square one. I'm celebrating today that, you know, on Instagram, I now have 10,000 followers. My YouTube just hit a thousand followers today. I'm in 32 countries. You know, I'm getting features everywhere. This is just, it's an amazing, amazing feeling to be here because it all started not for me trying to be seen, not for me trying to be popular, but me just doing what I felt was the right thing. And it's showing up in all the right ways. That is amazing. <laughs> I'm just like, oh my God, <laughs> what a really inspiring story, honestly. And so I just, you know, I'm just curious. So the bougie banker, like, you know, how did you come up with that name? And, you know, what, you know, do you like being called the bougie banker or do you want to be addressed as Raquel? <laughs> okay. So my name was something different at first. At first, my name was the bougie budgeter, but someone already had that trademark. And then I went to work and I was like, hey, y'all, I need help coming up with a name. The other bankers are the ones who told me to use bougie. They told me I was bougie. And they was like, that should be your name. So that's how that all started. And then it changed from budgeter to banker because legally I had to make the change. And so it's stuck now. At first, I really didn't like it. I was like, it just sounds so uppity. That's not me. I'm more humble and cool and collected and stuff. But I like really nice things and I like doing it affordably. And by definition, I am bougie. So it's stuck. It's here. I love it now. And yeah. Yes, indeed. Definitely. <laughs> I love it too. And I actually refer to you as the bougie maker. Sometimes I forget that your name is Raquel, really. <laughs> but um, I want to ask you some questions. And the first thing that comes to mind is what you say. Okay. I'm going to ask you a few questions. All right. So, and then I read the questions, just um, some words. All right. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Email or DM? Ooh. Uh... DM. Okay. Sephora or Alta? Sephora. Okay. Physical book or audio book? Physical. Save or spend? <laughs> <laughs> that one was a tricky one, but yes. Uh, um, save. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yes, yeah, the bougie banker. <laughs> All right. Late nights or early mornings? Late nights. All right. Impact or income? Impact. Lipstick or lip gloss? Ooh, lipstick. (laughs) Okay. All right. Um, Hulu or Netflix? Hulu. Okay. All right. And I want you to, um, this is the last question, actually. This is actually a question. Um, What's your favorite quote or like, um, something that you would say that represents what you are about concerning budgeting. Okay. So one of my favorite quotes actually comes from the Bible and I hope I quote this correctly, but it's saying what good is the use of having money in the hands of a fool is, I don't know if I did that correctly, but that's like my favorite one because a lot of people have access to money. 
Um, but what they do with it determines what their outcome is. Have you been hearing the buzz about business credit or business funding? Do you want to start and build your business but have no idea where to start? Well, head over to josetteflurry.net. Sign up to learn three secrets to building business credit so you may start building your business credit today. Okay, so I want to ask you a very important question that I think um, a lot of women and men entrepreneurs, honestly, but I know that you cater to uh, women students and clients, but what top strategy would you recommend if they're just starting out and or perhaps it could be a strategy that seasoned entrepreneurs could also be able to use. With managing their money? Yes, absolutely. With managing their money. So the w- number one thing that I run into when I help people create their budgets is most people have side hustles that, they, that they're doing or they have businesses that they're starting and they don't separate their money. And that part is just critical. You should definitely have a business account established. Even if you're sole proprietor, you should definitely be separating the money from your personal income to your business income. And if you're using your personal income to fund your business income, then you should still, or to fund your business, then you should be writing a memo on that transfer. And so you're using as operating expenses or starter expenses so that when you file your taxes, they're able to categorize that appropriately. But you need to move the two because you're going to have a hard time making a decision on what purchases were if they all stay in your personal account. And I'm so glad that you mentioned that because I know you mentioned that even if they're so, you know, prop, but then I am so glad you mentioned that keeping the two separate because it is like such a big deal in business credit world, you know, to um, actually separate your personal expenses from your business expenses. So I'm, I'm glad that, you know, you pointed that out that even though I asked you about budgeting, right? However, with business credit, it relates because of course, knowing that, all right, you want to know exactly what you're spending, but memo, write a, you know, um, write a description, and then also keep it separate from your personal expenses for when tax time comes or when, you know, you are trying to keep everything organized, which I know is a big deal for you as well, (laughs) organization, and, you know, keeping your money together. So um, I just wanted to ask you, what is a common myth that a lot of, you know, people who are looking to budget, especially, you know, someone like myself who's an entrepreneur, you know, who's looking to, you know, um, keep herself on a budget, but also be a little bougie about it. And, you know, I love nice things as well and not overspending, especially when you're just starting out with a new business. How, you know, can you actually put things in perspective that, you know, it's something that can be done and that can actually work for someone who's just starting out? So. Always look for the deal. I know the thing with being an entrepreneur is that we want to present like we always have it together all the time. But when you're starting out, you have to go with what you can. So I see people overspend to try to make it appear as if they just have it together and they're already successful and all of that. But honestly, this is even going to move into a marketing perspective. Your customer is going to appreciate the journey. So if you're starting out and you can't afford the nicest of things to make it just look fancy, you know, you can use that as a coaching moment. So if you have to start off on a budget, if you have to start off with, hey, guys, this is an affordable backdrop that I got. Guess what? You're coaching your customer, even though you're still purchasing something on a budget. So the number one thing that I noticed is that when entrepreneurs are just starting out, Typically, we feel like we have to have the best of everything, right? We have to have the new cameras. We have to have the lights. We have to have the best background setting. We have to have all of these things that cost additional money that you may not even have to spend. So always look for the bargain. And then then also, your consumer is going to appreciate watching your growth. You know, they're not perfect. And oftentimes, they just want to see the raw and the realness of it even though you can still be put together without it being expensive. So if you have an iPhone, use your iPhone camera, set it to 4K, 
um, 60, 60 XP or set it to 4K and leave it like that until your business grows to the position to where you need to purchase a Sony. This is if you're creating content. You're already paying for your phone. So use it and then use that phone as a business write-off, as a tax deduction, instead of going out and purchasing an expensive item. So when it comes to just being an entrepreneur, you want to think smart, not facade. And I think because people go with the front first of, oh, I have to do all these things to position myself as an expert, they're costing themselves more dollars on the front end than they necessarily need to. Amen. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yes, I agree totally. You know, being able to, you know, show the truth and also be transparent, I think is like one that folks could actually appreciate versus, oh, I'm putting on a front or yeah, yeah. I'm making it seem or sound like everything is put together. So I definitely- And it's costing them more. It's cost you more to be fake. It yeah. really does. Yes. It really does. Totally. I get it. So I just wanted to, you know, um, invite you to share with the audience how they could actually be able to find you or connect with you on social. So if people would like to find me, the best place to find me is on Instagram. And in there, I have the link section uh, within my bio and you can connect to my classes. You can connect to my YouTube. Um, I'm always teaching about Master Your Money Mindset. And I have a program that is designed to help women move away from living paycheck to paycheck to saving thousands of dollars that they've never saved before. And I have helped so many women go from literally negative accounts to saving one, their first a thousand, their first three thousand, some five thousand dollars that they never have to touch again. And they are living, again, their best bougie and balanced lifestyle. So it's just amazing. Yes, 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 yes. And I will definitely be connecting with you as well. Well, I'm already, <laughs> but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. So thank you again. I'm so glad that we had a chance to, you know, speak today and connect and talk. It was awesome. So enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. Thanks for listening to the Girls Get Fundable podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave us a review or a screenshot on Instagram while tagging us at josette.iamsecuringmygems.